Now, very few people, very few computer graphics companies, would ever lead with a human face uh, is uh, being rendered in real time, and it's not a photograph. Um, Lucas, let's let's uh, let's show them what what Ari can do. Now, to to um, <clears throat> let me explain some of the technology behind it. So, first of all, in order to capture the human face, our skin is a living thing. Light penetrates through our outer layers, goes into the skin, bounces around inside, and then scatters, and then comes out, picking up some of the tone of the color of your blood. And as a result, when you look at it, um, it looks alive. Of course, there's a lot of pores. Um, your eyes are the windows to the soul. And so obviously the eyes have to look alive. In this particular case, we use a technology called ray tracing to ray trace the eyes. That's why the eye crystal looks like it's, looks like it's alive. So yeah, this is a, it's a, uh, it's a big superstructure actually, as opposed to just a head. Um, and uh, has a lot of interesting features that are, that are cool. We have, uh, we have um, pretty rich metallic materials. Um, we have HDR lighting and tone mapping, um, cinematic effects like um, with like uh, lens flares, bloom. Now show them what global illumination and HDR mean. Yeah. Did you awesome. want to show us what global, global illumination and HDR turned off would look like? Yeah, definitely. So um, sort of rendering this with uh, with what it looks like using OpenGL S3. Um, so this looks like a computer graphics game today? Uh, yeah, I mean. Right? You know. Not with this many geometry. I mean, this is still rich with, with polygons, but without global illumination without high dynamic range, this is what your what your games would look like. And let's turn it back on. It's almost unbearable to watch. Okay, so so that's um, special effects, but but um, uh, the world the world is not always so peaceful, right? I mean sometimes there's astronomic events. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I mean, you know what? S could happen, right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So we have a pretty cool bullet time effect here where you can sort of pan around and see all the volumetric um, uh, you know, explosions, particles, um, debris. Uh, we're using uh, compute shaders to compute um, you know, the, the movement of things and the, the particle effects that happen. Um, this, is what, this is what a state-of-the-art mobile application, mobile game looks today. In fact, this is, an app, this is a game that's featured on Tegra 4. It's on Tegra Zone. It's a fantastic game, and they're doing incredibly well. However, this is what last generation graphics looks like. Let's show them what next generation graphics look like. And just the texture quality is just so incredible. But, you know, this looks like a photograph. Andrew, why don't you take us around here? Sure thing, Jensen. Why don't you take us around and talk us about some of this? Okay, so this, uh, you mentioned before, Unreal 4. This is Unreal 4 running on Tegra K1. So this is a demo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Unreal Engine 4 running on Tegra K1. Yeah, so this is a, a wonderful demo that Epic put together to show off some of the features of their engine. Um, as you mentioned, the, the art quality is, is second to none. Uh, the textures are amazing. And also, uh, lots of little effects. Uh, as we go around, I'll point some of them out. Look at the water dripping off the wall. Yeah, up here. The lens flare. You look at the sun, high dynamic range. Look how bright the brights are and how dark the darks are. OK, imagine a camera doing this. Really hard time with a camera doing this. Now it's computer graphics doing this. So as you mentioned before, this is trying to simulate exactly what uh, your eye sees. And indeed, uh, they have a feature called uh, pupil adaptation, where they calculate the luminance in the scene. And uh, just like you would uh, if you went from a, a bright environment into a dark environment, if you're outside and ran into a room, your pupil takes a little while to uh, sort of adapt to that. They build that into this engine as well. It gives wonderful effects. Uh, they've got lots of nice um, reflective surfaces as well. So over here we have uh, like a mirror, uh, we have tiles, um, the trash can over here uh, is reflecting the rest of the, the room. Now that trash can obviously looks so real because it's somehow simulated in a physically fi physically based ways. So that when light bounces off of it, you could almost feel 
the uh, steel that's, um, um, that it's made of. Absolutely, and you can see the water dripping down uh, in the back uh, there. And as we come along here, there's a, a more uh, sort of plastic uh, posters, uh, reflections again off the tiles. Uh, the quality of the textures is, is unbelievable. Um, this is real-time computer graphics, ladies and gentlemen, on a little mobile chip. Yeah, and that's tiny. <laughs> mentioned uh, before bumpy shiny you always have to have something shiny so uh, this is a nice shiny pipe whereas everything else in the scene is, is quite rusty and somehow this has managed to stay shiny. Uh, the final feature I'll mention uh, just briefly you see here there's a, a light um, sparking and uh, they do some very clever things with particle effects and they actually put physics on the particle effects so that the sparks don't just fly through the wall and through all the objects in the scene they actually bounce off the wall, and then you can see them uh, pulling. And they're actually lighting the environment. And they are lighting, yeah. So there's right. a light kicking out, and also the effects come down and then bounce around a little bit, give a nice... So they all become light sources, and they cast shadows, and you can just see it. It's fantastic. It's just absolutely exquisite. Now, these little tiny details is what increases the production value of games. And we see this with movies today. There are so many things that they do, the attention to detail, that they obviously don't have to do. They obviously don't have to do. But they do it because they want to create something that is exquisite. And you can just tell now, the engine makes it possible for them to do that. Okay, that's fantastic.